Uh, for more on the markets right now, though, we do want to turn to Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management. Uh, Ryan, the days start to blur, so I can't remember the last time I saw you, probably a month ago, and you were still pretty bullish on this economy. Where do you stand today? Yeah. And don't I look smart now, Kristen? Um, <laughs> I digress. No, I'm still still very, very bullish. I mean, we were one of the only firms out there. I think it was actually even March. I may have been on your show, kind of in the belly of the beast when markets were selling off every single day. And our viewpoint was we were going to see more of a V-shaped recovery. And that's absolutely what you're seeing right now. Because I think what a lot of people forget is the economy and the market are not the same thing. And they're never the same thing. I mean, if you look at any year you've had negative GDP, and this year is probably going to be a negative year for GDP. I don't think I'm going out on a limb saying that. 66% of the time, the market actually goes up because the market's forward-looking. The economic data is backward-looking. Okay, I'm glad that you brought that up. We see a disconnect. Obviously, both of these realities, uh, Main Street and Wall Street, pricing in two different scenarios here. How forward-looking is the market? Is the, is the market saying in three months, we're going to be in a better position in four months, six months? How forward-looking is it? And that's a good question. Well, first off, I mean, I think the news is already getting better, right? If things aren't getting worse, uh, I think it's kind of key here. So you're already seeing, I mean, you just have to walk outside to see there's more cars on the road. Uh, more people are flying now. Uh, there's less people filing for unemployment, the rates going down. So the news is already slightly getting better if you look at the economic data. But I think with the market specifically, I mean, markets can look out like 24 months in advance. And I think that's what you're seeing right now is smart investors are saying, OK, well, future fundamentals in a lot of these companies um, are going to look pretty good a year from now, two years from now. Earnings are probably going to be better than they were at the end of 2019, come 12 to 24 months from now. And I think that's very, very realistic because you got to remember this shutdown was actually engineered. It wasn't like we had a big financial crisis like 08, 09. So things can get back much quicker than they did, you know, the last recession that we had. Are you broadly positioned in the S&P 500, Ryan, or are you starting to pick winners and losers and decipher those in the broad market and allocating your fund's money to certain sectors? Yeah, absolutely. The S&P 500, our joke is it's a tech fun and drag. 20% of it is basically big tech, right? You have Apple, Microsoft, Facebook, Amazon, Google, and those stocks have held up you know, relatively better than everybody else has, You know, obviously with the pandemic. Um, you're still ordering a lot of things from Amazon. I mean, you talk about Netflix as well. You're watching more Netflix. But the bottom line is you have to start thinking about things that are down now that when the economy starts to mobilize again, what's going to do really, really well. And I love beating down sectors right now, like energy is a great example. And I talked about energy when I was on your show last time, which is an awesome time to buy energy because the reality of it is we are going to drive more. You know, the economy is going to get back moving again. Manufacturing is going to happen again. We're going to fly more. So, you know, you can buy things like energy right now, financials at really, really deep discounts to the overall market. And that's where you're going to get your biggest bang long term right now is buying the things that are really, really down that will benefit from the reacceleration of the markets. I mean, what a dichotomy at negative $37 a barrel on oil a month ago. And now we're plus $33 a barrel. That's that's confusing to anyone who would look at that. Ryan, are you anticipating that oil, the price of oil actually does go higher from here? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you look at the production cuts we're seeing in the U.S., you're seeing global spending right now. Production is at like the biggest cut ever. And again, we're going to get back to some sort of normalcy. And never mind even that. You think about all these emerging populations around the world. Uh, I think it's like 100 million people a year are going to become middle class. They're going to be very, very energy dependent. And if you even look at like peak energy for fossil fuels, it's going to be like 10 to 20 years out from now. And you're cutting production that's going to get out of bounds very, very quickly. So, you know, oil prices are definitely going a lot higher. And again, you can buy energy companies right now at some of the best pricing you're ever going to get, ever. I don't know if you're watching New York Governor Andrew Cuomo give his daily press briefings, but I've been watching on a regular basis. And he said something yesterday that I thought could have directly impacted the stock market, saying that there is a need for serious infrastructure spending to get people back to work. Now is the time we know President Trump has touted this since he first got into office. He does come from a real estate background. The materials industrial sector, is this a sector that you expect to benefit more than others as the economy can reopen? Yeah, I think absolutely. I think we know with this, uh, you know, with an election year specifically, 
Um, they're going to throw the kitchen sink at the problem they already have. Like I already joked, like the government and the central banks haven't put $9 trillion into the economy for it to fail. So I think like an infrastructure bill, something like that could definitely be on the docket coming up, whether it's after the election uh, or leading up to the election and anything right, that's infrastructure related, like Caterpillar is a good example. Stocks like that could benefit massively from some sort of infrastructure bill, which I think is realistic. That's definitely coming down the pipeline at some point. Yeah, and our producer highlighting that Caterpillar shares are up almost 4% today. Let's go back to the election. What risk does the election pose in November to the stock market? No one cares, Kristen. <laughs> I think Why, it's just Ryan? like Why? the most unimportant piece of news at this point. I mean, look, I think right now, you know, again, I don't have a crystal ball, but I'm going to assume it's kind of a crisis time. I, I think it's going to be hard pressed to see a change in leadership. And I think if the economy reaccelerates, which it already is, if that continues, that's where the focus is going to be, and that's what's going to drive these markets higher, and the election is going to feel like almost like a non-event. You heard it okay, here first. Okay, but the risk factor that I see is that a second wave could happen in the fall, and the timing could coincide with the re-election. Do you see that as being an issue? I don't. And again, I'm not an epidemiologist by any means, but I just think when you reopen the economy, especially in America, I don't think people are going to go back inside again. Uh, I'm going to take a leap and make that statement is I just don't think that you're going to be able to force people to go back inside and not make a living. I mean, we see the stats on this in general. It's obviously an older population that gets affected the most adversely. Doctors are getting smarter about how to treat it. You know, we're starting to see some some promising pharmaceuticals that may help alleviate the virus. And, you know, it's mainly people with pre-existing pre conditions. So I think when you start looking at the stats, it's just not as dire as we initially thought. And I just think that if you look at the medical community, they're sharing ideas, they're being really smart about it. And I just think that, you know, people in general are going to be smart about it. You know, I've seen New York here, let's everyone hope. is wearing masks. Ryan, let's hope. I hope people are smart about it. Um, even though we did see the latest Fox News poll showing that Biden leads by eight percentage points in the poll. Uh, Ryan, always a pleasure. We got to get you back soon. That's Ryan Payne. He's the president of Payne Capital Management.